actually a few days ago Google just announced a new um, algorithmic update, core algo update uh, called August 2023 core algo update. So tune in because that presentation might be even more important now than, than ever. So let's start with the client. The client, and this is actually a very important thing. Um, it they they bought the website um, in home and garden niche, and what happened was the purchase date was on November twenty twentieth. Uh, that's really important. This is when escrow released the funds, and what happened was a few moments later, literally a few days ago. This is the red line here. I highlighted when uh, the twentieth of November happened. And a few days later, literally, the this, this site started getting obliterated with um, new links popping in and the traffic was started going down like crazy. Now, the traffic was already somewhat declining. Uh, we can see it here. Uh, but when we compare the traffic from before the update, um, during the, the during this time and um, up until when we started working with the site with the previous period the sites lost almost 40 percent um, and when it comes to earl earnings september was one of the best months for this website um, pocketing roughly two thousand um, dollars then we had december after it was affected with with the dips um, the, the revenue went down to 800 just shy of 900 dollars and then january hit rock bottom at 669 so um and this is a graph with revenue uh, roughly so you can see how steeply it was it was going down um since um since basically the client bought the website um so understandably they were freaking out about it they were freaking out about their investment now Whenever you, when, whenever you approach an SEO for a new website, you can argue that that SEO strategy will be different. But overall, the the action plan or things that you follow, like a process, is usually the same. Um, so our process start with SEO auditing, strategy, and implementation. And um, this is my question, basically or answer with a question why why it starts with an audit is how can you help a website without understanding it first uh, basically so we always have to start with with the audit doesn't matter if it's a big e-commerce site or a humble blog obviously the time put into the auditing differs or based on the site uh, size of the site uh, but obviously this is what we start with and this element covers um, technical analysis, Google Search Console audit, keyword research, link building, content plan. Um, around the same time after we finished auditing, but around the same time we started doing penalty analysis. Um, and th by the way, I'm, I'm showing most of these things during the presentation. Um, we, the analysis was towards a potential negative SEO attack. Um, and we were also testing different approaches, which, which I share in a second. And also because, okay, you're in the penalty stage now, so you're, you might not be getting that much traffic, but you always have to remember hey, and have this nor northern star that you're working towards when you're planning for the site's growth. Um, we also looked at improving the monetization and I could sit here and, and talk to you a lot, probably like half a day about how we audited the website in details. But what I want to show you is our leverage. <laughs> okay, something you can leverage, our lever, something you can leverage when you're working on the sites, um, when, where you can actually, when you can actually spend less time and get really good results. So I'm not gonna go over everything um, in the audit, but I'll point, pinpoint things where you can probably improve. Now, for the SEO audit, we usually use Sitebolt, which is a great tool. Um, and this, in this particular SEO audit, uh, we discovered some duplicate content, images with missing alt text. And I'm not one of those guys who would scream about, oh yeah, there's one uh, image that has some issues. Um, but 
as SEO, what you need to do, you always need to assess what's the severity of the issue versus how difficult it is to implement it versus potential benefit. And this is how you know if something that you're planning to do or thinking of doing will actually have a potential or maybe it will just waste your, your resources. In this case, like I said, images with missing alt, alt tags, uh, basically none of the images on the site had alt tags and you know it was an info website in the home and garden niche so um, that is pretty visual so with something like over 1000 images on the site it was worth doing then there were some speed uh, page speed and core vitals issues um, duplicate or multiple h1 tags and missing meta descriptions now for the last two so h1 tags and missing, missing, missing meta descriptions i really can't um, encourage you enough to use Horseman. It's a crawler tool which you can basically connect to some external tools and while it's crawling it can actually execute some work for you. Um, in this case that's just an example where you can connect um, the crawler with the OpenAI um, API and then it can summarize content for you, rework your headings or write you new page titles or meta descriptions or H1 tags. Um, and then once it's done doing so, you can export everything to CSV file and import it to WordPress using a WP all import uh, plugin, which is basically like a drag and drop um, and it works in bulk. So you can save a, a lot of time with that. Now, during this, the SEO audit, we also do a Google Search Console review. In this case, we found this fella, which is one of the worst issues you might have. Uh, crawled, currently not indexed. That means there's a bunch of pages on your website that Google is seen, but it decided not to index them yet. Um, and by the way, if you're wondering why this issue just popped up here, is <laughs> it's actually because we were the first company or first person who installed Google Search Console on this website, so we didn't have the, any historical data. And when we saw that, that pointed to the direction that there's something wrong with the site structure. So we started working on the site structure as well. Now, this is how it looked like before. There were around five or six categories across over five, 500 blog posts. So you can imagine there was like 100 blog posts per category. Um, it was overfilled. The structure wasn't great. Um, and after we implemented like, I don't know, 25 additional categories, this is more or less how it looked like um, in terms of a graph. With the penalty analysis, obviously, you know, the, the thing looked not so great. We kept losing keywords, we kept losing traffic, um, and we started digging into that. Our suspicions were, as I said previously, negative SEO attack or something to do with a core algo change that happened recently. In the period of three months towards the, the end of last year, there were actually three really big algo updates. Um, so we were suspecting that was one of them. Now, starting with negative SEO, I plotted, the, so those blue lines are, time, are times when algo updates happened that had something to do with links um, and we started looking at that and, and we said well it hap it seems like after two weeks um, since both of these algo updates there were some uh, drops in traffic um, and maybe we were gra uh, grabbing at straws maybe we were we were not <laughs> we didn't have enough um, enough evidence to support that but nonetheless, if we looked at this link boner that the site got, when, which I showed you just a few days after escrow released funds to the, to the last owner and combined it with a very low DR rating, so the main rating, also some call it authority of the domain, we thought that, that it's just worth investigating. And if, you, if you're dealing with an algo penalty, there isn't one thing that you suspect that you shouldn't investigate. You should basically investigate all of them. Now, after we did um, full backlink audit, we started seeing some patterns and we saw a lot of a lot of bad websites that were definitely built for some rubbish for perhaps negative SEO purpose even. Um, the content on those websites, that's just an example. This is how it looked like. So obviously you can see it's not that great. 
Um, it's all made to build links and in a very bad way. So what we did, we disavowed everything over 440 domains, all of them that showed that pattern um, because we don't really like disavow too much. We've, we've seen websites where they didn't really need any, um, they didn't have any issues with the link profile and people or SEOs disavowed some links and then traffic started going down. So we're very careful with the disavow tool. Now, when we look at the core algo update, so again, with blue lines, we have, uh, we have timeline of when core Al algo updates happened. And we can clearly see that there was something to do with core algo updates and the traffic dips. Um, so obviously, yeah, we, we, we were going in the right direction. Now, the problem with core algo updates is that the whole playing field has shifted. Um, might be that AI got smarter, might be that neural networks that run Google's algorithm at the core reassigned some weights or readjusted weights. Um, the, the, the truth of the, of the matter is there's no fix. There's no one particular fix. In the past, you had manual or algorithmic penalty for something. Now, a broad algorithm change, change happens. There's a devalu devaluation and you didn't really get penalized. You just got what your site deserved based on the overall quality measured by the new change, newly changed algorithm. So you might um, argue with that, but it's not any one thing that you did or didn't do. It's everything, the whole picture that you should do. I, I think core algo updates is, are usually affecting sites that, um, that deserve that in some ways. I've seen examples where they didn't, but um, in most cases, there's something on the site that, that shows lack of quality. So um, since you have to fix everything you can, we went back to the whiteboard and started implementing all the basics again. Most of them were already discovered in the audit, by the way, because all of these things I'm talking about actually, um, actually connect with each other. Um, so we did some very mundane basics. We did con content improvements, added additional FAQ sections, key takeaways. Uh, by the way, speaking of content improvements, this is my perfect example. I'm sure Viola and her presentation, when she, when she looks at this content, she's going to be like, what the fuck is that? Uh, but just, just to quote a few uh, here, replacement period, contact the plumbing expert or professional, repaired when they become tired after long-term service. Um, and my personal favorite, nothing, there is nothing for a lifelong last, which I think they meant to say that nothing lasts forever, but um, it was just a, <laughs> just a really bad, really bad um, a rewrite or something. I don't know. Now, FAQ sections, obviously we implemented them uh, based on, um, I'm actually talking about tools in a second, but we implemented them based on people also ask. We implemented JSON-LD schema uh, markup for structured data. With key takeaways, this is an example from one of the big news sites, um, Daily Mail. Um, a lot of big sites do that. Um, I think personally that helps users assess the quality of the page or, or understand if this is helping them or no. Um, for most of that, we use GPT-4. Um, and like I said, people also ask, and I know what you're probably thinking. You're like, oh, rad, but AI content, isn't it like, a shady area in Google. And I say, well, you got to find a balance between automation and personalization because you can support um, AI content with human writers or the other way around, if you like that, and um, everything will be, will be good. Now, um, we saw in the early March, we saw some um, early signs of the penalty lifting. We were still losing keywords, which is good because Google was purging what was irrelevant. Uh, what wasn't uh, meeting um, user intent, but the traffic started seeing slight overturns. Um, so that was a small win. We saw some keywords popping in, so that was good. Um, but then another app, <laughs> another Google app that happened um, mid-March, I think it lasted an entire month or five weeks. So we did see another bucket of death um, in terms of the traffic, um, but I take it that it was mainly the re-evaluation. So Google was focusing on re-evaluating and understanding what's changed on this website and how it actually improved. And then traffic 
skyrocketed like never before, basically. Now, in terms of the growth plan, so most of these things were happening around the same time. Um, but um, so we did keyword research at the beginning, content planning at the beginning. We started writing content around March um, or February. I don't remember exactly. We started building links pretty early on too. Um, we in the growth plan we also looked at additional monetization and surprisingly we actually implemented a full new language version of the site spanish version um, now with the growth plan like i said you, you can't lose that that um, goal from from your strategy because there's always growth needed so even if you're going to be dealing with longer uh, term penalty or devaluation, algorithmic devaluation, because it happens sometimes with core algo updates, you always have to have and keep executing the growth plan. Now, when it comes to monetization, so uh, the client was a content website that was monetizing traffic with um, display ads. And don't get me wrong, display ads are great. But the problem is they're not that scalable. You can't do much about them. Obviously, you can chuck a lot more of them on the website, but then you end up with something like that, which is definitely against the user experience principles, which you can actually get penalized for. Um, so that's not a good idea. One of the things we suggested to the client, obviously going into um, affiliate marketing, and since the client was already had already content mentioning some products, affiliate marketing, uh, marketing just just made sense and the easiest one um, to start with is Amazon Associates. Um, it's very easy to join, it's very easy to implement on, on the website, it's very easy to start making money. Speaking of implementing it on the website, we have a go-to plugin, AWP, which with a simple short code allows you to implement something like that with just a few clicks, with just a minute spent. Um, or another example, something like this. So the product boxes can be in all of your blog posts and that's like, takes you, takes you seconds to, to add. However, the problem with Amazon Associates is that it's very oversaturated because it's so easy to join. Everyone wants to be in there. Everyone wants to make some money. It has relatively low commissions. Um, I think the maximum is like 8%. Um, so it's not that great. And comparing to other programs, it has a very short cookie duration. It, mean, it means that if someone goes to uh, Amazon from your website uh, and buys something only within 24 hours, then the commission is attributed to you. If it's over 24 hours, the commission is attributed to no one, just Amazon. Um, now, a lot of programs out there, affiliate programs, have a much longer co cookie duration. I think I saw like two or three, uh, one or two months um, in, in some programs. So um, obviously there's a lot of them, just a few examples here. Um, so obviously you can choose and join a different one. They are or might be a slightly more difficult to implement. However, they will probably pay you better in the long run. Now with the additional monetization, there's a bunch of ideas you can you can actually use to monetize your website. You can create a newsletter, you can do direct ad sales where you approach companies and ask them, hey, do you want to uh, do you want some ads on my website? Um, so then obviously the revenue goes to you or uh, you can do lead generation, app sales, cross sales, you can do drop shipping, or you can start a YouTube channel based on your content. So yeah, the the, the the rule of thumb is the more ways to monetize your website, the better for you, because if something happens with one monetization um, source, like, I don't know, rates change for ad networks, like which actually something happened for this website, uh, but I'll mention it later also, um, or I don't know, Amazon slashes the rates, um, then you have some fallback um, for, for your earnings. Now, in terms of the Spanish version, that was a very spontaneous one. Um, in the US, there's 41 million people above the age of five who speak Spanish at home. So that's a huge, um, huge, huge um, uh, potential uh, audience. Now, worldwide, it's even bigger. It's close to 500 million, so half a billion 
people who speak Spanish worldwide. So that, that seemed like a really good idea and we wanted to run it as a proof of concept. So what we did, and um, I am a software engineer. That's probably the reason why I don't really like um, <laughs> why I don't really like WordPress that much. Um, now I know the underlying language that builds WordPress. I just don't th really like their technical decisions, um, and I didn't want to learn all of these solutions that WordPress implements. So what I did. I wrote some code um, for myself, so like uh, like uh, scaffolding. I gave it to ChatGPT, and it became my best and favorite technical assistant that helped me build this whole system uh, myself. Now, then I connected everything with um, DeepL Translate API, which is brilliant, which handles uh, HTML, so you don't have to fuff around with that. Um, this is actually a, a a little bit of an example of the code that was doing the exact translation that I wrote. Um, and then, yeah, it worked. I was so in a frenzy of creating that, um, that I even forgot that I can take screenshots and I took, <laughs> I, I took photos of my screen because I wanted to share it with my colleagues very quickly. So it did work. We, um, within like a couple of hours um, after we started it, all the content was translated, downloaded from WordPress Translate and, and um, sent back up. Um, and surprisingly to me, Google took like four days only. I think the screenshot was taken after four days and they already indexed around 420 um, URLs with that Spanish content. So that was crazy fast. Um, now, <clears throat> when it comes to results only on the Spanish version, um, we pushed it live on April the 27th. So within three months, it got 5,000 clicks, 209,000 impressions. Um, I think it earned like, I don't know, maybe $200, but that wasn't the point because that, since it was only a proof of concept from our side, we didn't actually charge the client anything for making that happen for his for his website. Um, so I think still this is a pretty pretty good result. And as you can see, it keeps growing. So I think I think it will be it will be pretty good. Now speaking of the results um, for the entire website, first of all, um, we did recover the penalty. Uh, year over year over year we had some really good um, uh, growth. Um, I'm, I'm showing sc screenshots from, from Google Analytics in a second uh, also. Um, then month over month, uh, and why, I'll tell you exactly in a second, um, sessions were growing up, I mean, still are growing up. Um, so this is uh, a screenshot of um, Google Analytics and um, Search Console. With all the traffic, you can see it's, it's, it's higher than ever. Um, this is because we were so busy dealing with the penalty we pretty much forgot that um, on this website uh, universal analytics is is going to sleep is retiring on the 30th of june that's why i can only compare that um, uh, to the last year up until the 30th of june so year on year we had like 55% growth and uh, for the same reason why I was comparing until the 30th of June, we looked at Google, um, Google Analytics 4 comparing 1st of July to August the 6th when I was writing this case study um, and the previous periods just to show you that the traffic kept growing. So month on month, that last period uh, versus um, the one covered with Google Analytics 4, we are still up uh, almost 10% in sessions and 7.6% in new users. So obviously for a, um, for, for a content website, that's, that's pretty good. And I know everyone is interested with money in money. So revenue numbers, like I said, in December, January hit rock bottom. This is when we already started work, but nothing we did could have been indexed on Google. So it couldn't have had any impact yet. Um, so 669, the lowest. Our work started kicking in, in February, some growth, March, April, we're going up um, in May. This is 
the title of the case study, 373% increase. Um, then we had a little hiccup in June. Um, there was uh, there were some changes um, in both Google, so another algo update that we had to do some tweaking with. And there were some changes in the rates uh, paid by the display networks. Um, and then in July, we're still climbing up, um, so slightly better. But plus, on top of that, we started hitting this sweet affiliate revenue, which I hope will just keep going up. So, um, yeah, this is me. This is my version imagined by <laughs> my, uh, my avatar imagined by AI. So obviously we can see that AI has some issues with reality. Um, I've been in SEO since 2010, developer since 2001. I'm very pragmatic and I like simplifying things. You can find me on social media. Um, about us, so we are two agencies, non-agency and Husky Hamster. Husky Hamster deals with international link building, non-agency de uh, deals with global SEO strategies, SEO, SEO auditing, technical and programmat programmatic SEO development. I'm giving back to community, speaking at different events and yeah, that's all. Thank you. If you're interested, I actually wrote an ebook with SEO strategy blueprint, so you can download it. And uh, yeah, that's all from me. Thank you very much.